the juvenile that was driving the Bronco entered into the water and got stuck in about four feet in the creek. That's when one person pulled out their cell phone and called for help. But the question remains, would the introduction of new dancing really improve business in lead? Kind of hard to do a story about the South Dakota Drift Series without actually experiencing drifting, which is what I'm going to do. Wish me luck. It was a little nervous walking out on the ice when it's 50 degrees outside. Did you really went out there on the ice? I did, yeah. I was, I was standing on the ice when I did that interview. Yeah. The camera was out there, too. Yeah. I was like, please don't fall. In this spot, the rifle range is right behind me, over this hill, past the runway. And people living on this stretch of road say they're worried a stray bullet could hit their property, or worse, a person. One in 100 newborns are affected by FASD. In South Dakota, that statistic is doubled. There are a few simple ways that you can help protect your identity. And one of the easiest ways is just to have multiple passwords. This darker color, the red right here, is the sound where it's the loudest. And the lighter areas, this purple right here, is where it's much quieter. I just like to see people jump into icy cold pools when they don't have to. Yeah. Officials of the landfill say they get about 375 tons a day of this trash during a regular week. Good evening, I'm Kyle Horan. Thanks for watching tonight. A Mitchell family is without their little girl after a high-speed chase ended fatally on Saturday afternoon. It happened just before 3 o'clock at the intersection of 1st Avenue and Duff Street in Mitchell. Ashley Cringen was in Mitchell today. She has more. Across the Black Hills, outdoors lovers can take advantage of 500 miles of trail. Now, money earned from a new permit system started just last year is looking to expand the trail system even more. In 2011, the Forest Service implemented a permit system for off-road motorized vehicles. The motorized trail permits pulled in about $175,000. Officials are looking to put that money back into the roads and trails. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers officials say that the potential for flooding along the Missouri River is low, but people should still be watchful for changes in water levels. The Corps says there is no current snowpack in the Missouri River Basin states, and snowpack in the mountains is normal. The runoff is also normal. But Kevin Grode of the Corps' Omaha office says the risk of flooding on the tributaries going into the Missouri River is still possible. He says although it may not be as bad as last year, there could still be flooding in some places on the river. Officials have said it is still possible possible that there could be heavy spring rains in the basin. Temperatures have been on the warm side recently, and even though the warm weather can be good for people who enjoy the outdoors, the warm temperatures and dry air are the ingredients for fire weather. New Center One's meteorologist Eric Burke tells us more on fire weather and its dangers. The National Weather Service here in Rapid City has issued a red flag warning through tomorrow evening for western South Dakota. Very gusty conditions and low relative humidities are the main concern. And that really is just the big story for us here, Bob, yeah. is, is the hot temperatures, yeah. dry conditions that we've seen for weeks, yeah. weeks and weeks, and, and now the, the fire danger is, is really high. It's really high, plus those winds. You know, it doesn't take long. You get a little spark and you get a little fire going. Those winds just uh, spread it rather quickly. And thunderstorms is, uh, like Eric was saying, you know, that's a, that's a big problem as well and we are expecting to see some uh, uh, thunderstorms tomorrow so there's a possibility we could see some natural uh, fires uh, being calls. fired up just because of this uh, cloud to ground lightning that we're expecting uh, tomorrow afternoon well let's hope not. yeah All right. and a little later how allergens are breaking records across the country and what that means for allergy sufferers stay with us Thanks, Adam. Rounding out our series of pine beetle problem, fighting the bugs on the ground, we'll follow beetle infested trees to the lumber mill. I got a chance to take a tour of the Nyman Lumber Company here in Hill City and see how the beetles are affecting their business. Mark is a keeper. Trucks bring logs harvested in the Black Hills pine forest to this lumber mill off Highway 16 near Hill City. Trees, both beetle infested and healthy, are processed and turned into boards at a pace of about 8,000 logs a day. However, infested trees far outnumber healthy trees. 70% of harvested logs are hit by the mountain pine beetle. Even walking on the ground on mill property, the damage caused by the pine beetle can be seen in the surrounding forest. It's a testament to the growing mountain pine beetle problem happening in western South Dakota. Uh, the timber industry cares about the Black Hills. That's their bread and butter. That's how they make a living. Uh, it's not to their advantage to have the mountain pine beetle rampaging uh, through the Black Hills. It's not to the Forest Service, and, and I don't think it is to the publics either. Yeah, they'd have been really nice. This inspector is having a look at pine beetle infested trees that were harvested from behind the Shrine of Democracy. Even Mount Rushmore can't escape the epidemic. 
The infestation is given away by the tree's blue tint, a result of thousands of mountain pine beetles burrowing into the bark, eating, laying their eggs, and making tunnels just under the surface. When you have bug-infested trees, what happens is the, the mountain pine beetle carry a fungus with them, and uh, we call it blue stain, that gets into the wood. Uh, as a result of that, and it actually infests the wood uh, uh, very quickly. But there's no place in the timber market for blue boards. Even though they're structurally the same, this blue timber is worth much less than uninfested wood. So much so, Rushmore Forest Products Incorporated doesn't make a profit. It costs the same amount to produce a blue board as it does a white one, but the price drops 28 percent. People from Nyman Lumber Company say much of this blue wood becomes pallets or crating since consumers don't like the color. These problems spell trouble for the 123 people working at the plant and other logging companies in the Black Hills. People from Nyman tell me even though they aren't making a lot of profit selling beetle infested boards, they still understand the importance of thinning out the trees to protect from future pine beetle infestations. These sixth grade students at Dakota Middle School grab lunch in the cafeteria. Many unaware that the food has been changed. We know how important a healthy, a healthy meal is so that students can learn to um, all day long stay at their optimum learning capabilities. And so that's what, what we feel our part is, um, is food service. Janelle Peterson is the food service supervisor for Rapid City Area Schools, a new position filled since just this past summer following the passage of the Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act, a campaign aimed at making kids more healthy in America. Peterson is in charge of making sure area schools make the cut when it comes to nutrition. We are feeding uh, about 7,200 children a day, and so they, the kitchens stay very busy. In Rapid City, meals for high school and elementary school students are always made fresh right here in the kitchen at Stevens or at Central High School. However, things are slightly different nowadays as lunch ladies prepare meals offering more fruit and vegetables, grain-rich foods, and foods with reduced amounts of fat and sodium. You know, one of the things that we do here um, with the school nutrition programs is expose kids to things that maybe they weren't used to seeing in the past. So while they may be used to seeing canned pears, canned peaches, they may not be as used to getting the opportunity to taste kiwi or blueberries or those sorts of things. In the future, these new standards will ensure that kids are served properly by age. So meals served to these middle school age students won't be the same amount of calories as meals served at Central or Stevens. While some students might not notice the changes, teachers do. The quantity of food the kids are getting and the kids seem to be eating the entire lunch. Um, and we've heard positive comments from the students as well. The faculty may want kids eating healthier, but the lunchroom favorites will stay the same. What's your favorite thing here on the menu? I'd say super nachos. But don't spill the beans because those nachos may be better for the kids than they think.